Uh, yesterday or the day before, we was into uh, Hebrews chapter 12. We was talking about embracing correction, you know, uh, because th this is pruning us. I want to touch a little bit on this because it's pruning us for our, our witness, our testimony. Christ wants us to have a strong witness, you know, and we don't need to resist this um, this uh, correction. Where it's not going to be necessarily enjoyable, but it's most definitely we need to embrace it. We need to embrace this knowing that we have a home in heaven for we are not an illegitimate child of God, but we are a legitimate child of God, one who has passed from death to life through the bloodstained cross of Jesus Christ, that there wasn't but one way to go to heaven, that's through Jesus Christ, and that's the gospel. I want to go a touch on this also, that we don't need to refuse him who speaks. If the children of Israel could not refuse God, they could not uh, refuse him here on earth when he spoke. It said they could not escape who refused him who spoke on earth. When, when, when God spoke on earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn from him who speaks from heaven? It's saying that Christ speaks louder from heaven. God is speaking louder. He is screaming down from heaven. We stand with no excuse. We cannot sit here and say that, well, we cannot hear God. It says no, a man can stand and look at what God's hand has created and know that there is a creator we know there is someone out there there is love out there and love come no one knows love except that christ loved us first we know love for christ loved us first that's how we know, know love that's what true love is, is the love that christ has shown on the cross this is john 15 that uh you know that uh no greater gift it says no man lays his life down except for his friends he's he's called us friends he's laying his life down no greater love than this for one to lay his life down for his friends Christ has called you friend, and he's called me friend. There is no greater love than that, and we know love for Christ loved us first, and that's how we know it, that we do not need to refuse him, and he is speaking very loud from heaven. We're going to go ahead and talk about, so what do we need to do? We, don't need, we need to embrace this correction, so therefore there, we need to go ahead and settle down into what? It says, uh, chapter 13, let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertain angels remember the prisoners as if chained with them so uh, those of you who have been mistreated since yourselves are also in the body remember the prisoners as if you are chained with them you know cry with those who cry weep with those who weep you know uh, be happy with those praise with those who praise you know what i'm saying jump in the boat with people you know what i mean don't don't shun them i believe that's what the word is telling us there to remember the prisoners as if you are chained with them yourselves Marriage is honorable, it says, among all the bed and the foul, but fornicators and adulterers, <clears throat> God will judge. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For if he himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you, saying that God is, if you've got a little, a, a, a little be a lot if the Lord be with it. You know, a little is a lot if the Lord be with it. You know, uh, Christ, he may have give you a little bit, you know, but he puts great things in the small, in the small things in life. You know, some of the greatest things depend upon, upon the least of things in this world. God's ways are not our ways, you know. He is giving you, it, it, it depends on what you're going to do with what you do have. You see, being grateful will open up the gates of heaven. You know, that, that right there is offering up a sacrifice of joy. When times are hard, you praise God. When times are good, you praise God. In all things, praise God. You know, in all times, praise God. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Don't want, don't covet your neighbor's stuff. Don't want his truck. Want one like it, amen. Go get you one to, to sort of like it. You don't want his. You don't want his wife, amen. You're going to be good to yours, you see. It says, be content with such things that you have. Be happy with what you have. For he himself says, I will never leave you or forsake you, saying that what you have, what you have has been given to you by God. You know, anything that you do have has been given to you by God, and he's not going to leave you or forsake you. It says, so then, if that's the case, then we can say boldly. We can say boldly, verse 6, chapter 13, verse 6, Hebrews. We can say boldly that the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Well, what can man do to you? He can do nothing to you but take your life. We're not to be afraid of man who can take your life, but to be, be, have a reverent fear of God who can take your soul. You know, a lot of people, you know, God doesn't have to take your life. All he has to do is stop giving it to you. Christ don't have, doesn't end up take your life. He's a giver of all things. The cross is a plus sign. It adds to your life. It doesn't take away. Christ is adding to your life every single day. Every breath from God has been, every, every bread crumb that's been on your table has rolled out from heaven first and fell down on top of your table. That's how God has provided for you. You see, 
and life, every breath you take every morning, you can offer up a sacrifice of praise and his burden is light and realizing that Christ, everything that you've been given, every good gift comes from, from, from the Father, from heaven. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. It says, what can man do to me? I'll fear no man, but I'll fear God who can take my soul for I'm in the word. I don't have to fear man, but anything other than outside of this word of God, you'd be thinking, what can man do to me? Living in fear to cast out all love and cast out all certainty. In the word, I have love. In the word, I have certainty. In the word, I know to embrace correction. In the word, it says here, I will not fear for the Lord is my helper. What can man do to me? Remember those who rule over you. I want to touch on this. Verse uh, 7. Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose fates follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. It says, remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, those who have planted that seed in your life. Don't you remember how they conducted themselves? They obviously embraced correction, took it and, uh, and used this uh, uh, correction to their good and went out witnessing, conducting themselves in brotherly love, Without covetousness, they have spoken a word in our life. They've conducted themselves. That's what attracted us. It wasn't the big church, the coffee. It wasn't the free t-shirts or the glow sticks at the door. Anything that attracts you other than the spirit to a church, it won't keep you. It won't be strong enough to hold you there. You see, it's only Christ. It's not Christ and a free t-shirt. It's, it's not Christ and I want to bow down to Mecca. It's not Christ and I have to slap myself across the back and pour dirt over the top of my head. And what it is, is just Jesus. Just give me Jesus. That's all it is. It's, it's very simple. We don't add to it or take away from it. And then if you're trying to add to Christ, you're taking away from him. You know, it says, remember those who rule over you, who've spoken that word of faith to you, those ones that has witnessed in your life and has changed your life. The reason why you changed was the light that was in their eyes. You could see the peace that they had. It wasn't anything else. It wasn't the glam it wasn't the big likes, the big show, the big praise band. It was the word of God. It was the seed of faith they planted in you. And you saw something in them. And you said, I want what they have. And the Spirit convicted you. And you turned around and gave your life to Christ that no man comes to, to the Father unless the Spirit draw him. It was the Spirit that drawed you. It wasn't the big show. It was the word, the way, the truth, the life. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's the same gospel. The same gospel's winning people, winning souls thousands of years ago. And even today, he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You ever want to know where that verse is at? It's in, it's in Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So don't be carried about, it says in verse 9, with various strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established by grace not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. Saying that it's got to be about the grace of God. I just got finished saying that. It's about the grace of Jesus Christ, about his mercy, his grace, what he did, and how he has accepted me, that he has wooed me, and he has sought after me. He chased after me. A lot of people say, I found God. He never was lost. God found, came to me. He wanted me. He loves us that much. He come to you. He's coming to you. It says, uh, and that's where we stand with no excuse. You read on down, it says, Therefore Jesus is sanctifying the people with his own blood and not the blood of animals. Let's go outside the camp and bear his reproach. Let's go outside this church. Let's go outside and spread the word. On down, verse 15, Therefore by, by him let us continue to offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is being content with what we have with the fruits of our lips, giving thanks to his name, giving thanks to the name of Jesus. Wow. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. If it's not Christ which is attracting you, if it's not the Spirit, then it's not going to be strong enough to hold you there. If you're there, it's like it's okay, it's good to do the right things for the for the right reasons. You know, you got to do the right for the right reasons. You know, I need to be over here because the Spirit led me. Not because that's just where all the crowd is going, you know. It's like I'd rather keep up high spiritual standards and have a handful of people than to lower spiritual standards and have swarms of them. I'm talking about compromise. I'm talking about these rib issues are better about uh, pre-rapture, post-rapture, all this stuff. I'm not. I'm talking about those are rib issues. I'm talking about the deity of Christ. I'm talking about the virgin birth, the blood atonement, 
the incarnation of Christ, that vicarious death, I'm talking about the death, the burial, the resurrection, that he lives today, that the one way, there's only one way to heaven, that's the deity of Christ, who he was, totally God who became totally man. He wasn't man that become God. He was sitting already on the throne, and now we have him still on the cross. We need to get up out of his chair and give him his preeminent spot. We need to give him his seat back. And we need to put ourselves back up on the cross. I really believe this. This is something I need to do daily. We die daily. We die to ourselves. Christ must have his seat back on the throne in our lives. He must be first. Christ must be first. Offering up a praise, giving thanks to his name, the fruit of our lips. God is satisfied, it says, with such sacrifices as this. He is very well pleased. When I read in the word that God is well pleased with a with a sacrifice of praise, I don't have to do nothing but just make but just be aware and thankful for what he's done in my life, then I need to do that. It's plain as day. It's written right here. The word says it and it settles it. Amen.